Hello everybody. Uh, today we're going to take a look at the Watts 1030 Introduction to Servers and Hosting Assignment for Static Website Deployment. So, so far throughout the quarter, all of the previous uh, assignments have been about learning to use the command line and get around on the command line and use tools on the command line to find files, to manage files, make directories, get files on your on your server, and uh, make text edits and everything th through some of the command line text editors. Now we're actually going to jump into deploying a website. It's going to be what we call a static file website, a static website. And that means that it's going to be just HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and images that are going to be deployed. And those are going to be delivered using a web server called Apache. So when you come to this um, assignment, you're going to see a pretty good, uh, pretty lengthy introduction. Now, there's really only three basic requirements. I want you to set up Apache on, your dro on a droplet. I want you to clone your repository to a location that you can make accessible via Apache. And then I want you to configure Apache to serve your website. So here on DigitalOcean, I'm making a droplet called Static Novice and I am picking the $5 a month size. It uh, doesn't really matter what region you pick. And then I'm going to use Ubuntu. And for the applications, I'm going to select LAMP on 1404. So that means uh, the LAMP stack, which is uh, Linux, Apache, MySQL. And people tend, usually think of the P as standing for PHP, although it could be Perl, Python, um, or PHP, or sometimes you see it written as Lamer, <laughs> which might include Ruby. Um, there's all kinds of, of ways that you can put this together. This is a pretty traditional way of putting things together. Most hosting services allow you to do something like this, deploy what's called a generic LAMP stack on a server. Um, it's a very basic uh, web hosting uh, setup, you know, and it's just a set of applications installed on the computer. Um, Obviously, you'll, you'll add your SSH keys and everything and create the droplet like normal. And once you've created it, you'll be able to uh, see the IP address and everything that it's using. And you'll be able to uh, access that just like you could your previous droplets that you created. The other thing that you need to do before you kind of get working on it is you need to configure a subdomain. So I've configured this subdomain 2048.shonar.com. You previously bought a domain and pointed it to your GitHub profile pages. So now what you can do is go into your whatever your domain registrar was and in your domain registrar configure a subdomain and you want to set it up to point a C name record. So um, I'm skipping a little bit ahead here, but um, you can uh, you you point the C name record to the IP address of your droplet. So it's this IP address here in your droplet that you're going to point your C name record to, and you know you can make most registrars allow you to make quite a lot of of subdomains. So you know you can you can keep on making those uh, and and using them for different projects and everything um, so we're also going to have to uh, clone the website code this is an odd assignment because you don't actually need to fork this repository before you clone it you, you certainly are welcome to fork it but um, you don't have to we will have to install git on our new server um, so we have to say apt git install git and we did that previously um, if we aren't editing the website code, then we don't actually need to configure Git beyond that. We can leave Git with its default configuration. However, if you do want to edit the files in, the, in this site and uh, modify them before you deploy them, then you'll need to fork the repository and then use your regular uh, uh, setup Git like you normally would with your Git uh, global, global configuration, setting your user name and your user email. Um, if you do not want to go through that hassle, you can just clone this with the HTTPS uh, URL 
and it will allow you to clone it because all of these repos are actually available to the public. So um, it's just that SSH requires you to be a known person. If you don't use SSH, then then you can you can just clone across HTTPS, and that's why it's useful to be able to switch between those. You'll need to clone that into the location where your web files are. And when you log in, you'll notice that you'll see on this, um, on this opening screen here, your location for where uh, your web root is located, slash var, slash www, slash HTML. So it's easiest if you go into that directory before you clone your repository. So you can do that with cd slash var slash www slash html. And if I do an ls here, you'll notice that I've already cloned out the repository, watts1030 static dash website. So I can go, go into that directory and you can see that this is my, uh, this is my repo. And if I wanted to, I could even run a git status here and I, I haven't done any changes, so everything is clean. So that's um, that's important to uh, keep in mind as well. Um, so now that I have uh, now that I've gotten in um, uh, gotten this this repository all set up and cloned into the HTML space, I could actually go to this IP address and I'll be able to see this Ubuntu page which is the default Apache 2 Ubuntu default page and I could even go into this directory path here and I should be able to see the game that we're deploying which is a game called 2048 running here in the web browser. And so now all that I have to do is set up what's called the virtual hosts configuration in Apache. Now, Apache uses a concept called virtual hosts to, de to show different websites at different locations. A virtual host is just a web URL, a location on the web, and where that correla correlates to in terms of a directory on the server. So you're literally saying this location on the web is actually going to serve files from this directory on the server. And so to do that, we, we can configure um, a virtual host configuration. Now, I have a link here to a great DigitalOcean support file that tells you how to set up this stuff in great detail and it tells you exactly where to edit and everything now the only difference is that they're setting it up for two different domains you only need to set it up for one domain but you can see that uh, they walk through all the different changes that you have to make so go through sections four and five of this tutorial the step five is where you uh, enable things so you have to run a little command to actually enable those virtual host files and what you do is you just you edit this virtual host file um, which is available up here you can see so if I copy that out and I can say uh, nano they, they like sudo nano and then I put in that URL if I hit tab twice you see, can see the different confs that I've made. So there's one for 2048. So I'm just going to select that one and open it. And you can see that I have that configured so that the server admin, seanr plus 2048 at gmail.com, 2048.seanr.com, and everything else is is basically unchanged from what they had in here before. So um, that's all good. So I can just control X to exit. And in fact, um, and then I ran the commands that were described right here to add 
those virtual host configs to what Apache will see and then to restart Apache. So remember Apache is just an application that's running on your computer. It's just like as if you had your IM client running on your computer all the time and then you know you just had a real convoluted way of <laughs> defining a new account. It's basically the same thing. And now as you can see here at 2048.shinar.com I can come here and play our game 2048 which is a cool little number crunching game. We can play it till our eyes bleed <laughs> and uh, have a good time. So that's it. Enjoy yourselves deploying your static website. If following these instructions is too easy for you, then certainly try doing the entire thing but with Nginx. There's links on the resource page in the course uh, to that give you more information about working with Nginx and there's some great documentation on DigitalOcean itself if you look up in their support pages about Nginx. Um, Nginx is a really popular web server, uh, second most popular web server, so um, and, and often works with Apache to deliver sites. You can uh, you could deploy a bunch more stuff. You could deploy stuff that you made in class last quarter or other static websites that you've made on your own. You could deploy those just for practice. And um, that's it. So have fun. Enjoy going through all of these steps and getting your first web server configured and running. There's a lot of new concepts, a lot of um, a lot of information in the in the files to read and to get used to. And um, that's it. Uh, don't be afraid to experiment. Remember, with these droplets, you can always destroy them and recreate them. It's okay. Uh, it costs very very little to experiment. So please uh, do what you will and do it as many times as you have to to get to get used to it so have fun and i'll see you next week